During a recent Fan Mail Friday episode, I got this unmarked box, which happened to be from Sinterit, a company that makes the Lisa, an SLS 3D printer. What is SLS printing? What's the Lisa? What's in the box? <laughs> Just a moment. I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. Cool, crazy, future 3D printed things I can hold in my hand. We all know FDM style 3D printers, printers that have plastic being sent through a hot end and extruded out of a nozzle. And we know SLA and DLP 3D printers, the types that use a resin with a build platform that lowers into the resin and a laser or an LCD screen cures resin in layers as the build platform pulls the model out of the goo. But what is SLS 3D printing? Well, SLS 3D printing stands for selective laser sintering, and it's where the power source is a laser and the material is a powder, usually a nylon, and the laser sinters a layer of nylon powder. That layer is then dropped a little bit and another very small layer of powder is brought over and the laser sinters it again over and over and over until you have a part encased in a nylon powdered shell. You then remove the powder with a brush and then you can take the part to a system where you can use air to clean it off. And once you're done, you're left with a fully functional nylon part. There's a bunch of reasons why this is cool, but the two main reasons I like to talk about is one, the nylon powder itself that isn't sintered acts as a support material. So whatever you make, is supported by the nylon powder. You don't have to build in any additional supports. And two, the resolution of this printing process is incredible. You get very fine details. And because the nylon powder itself becomes the support material, then you can make functional parts that move all in one go without having to first print them and then assemble them. Enough about that. Let's let's get into this box that Sinterit sent. They did send some, some candy, which I will get into later. But the first model I do wanna show you and show you up close is this. So on the front, it does say 3D Printing Nerd. And then on the side, it does say Center It. Then you get to see this amazing pentagonal, if that's even a word. And when you look at it, you can tell that it's, this isn't a typical manufacturing process that made this. And so when this is made, all of those nylon powders that aren't sintered acted as the support material and allowed you to make something as extraordinary as this. This is just the first piece I pulled out of the box, you guys. This is, it gets crazy. Imagine trying to print this piece on an FDM printer or even an SLA printer the support material that you'd have to clip off or break away and clean off, it would just be extraordinary and you wouldn't be able to do it. Look at this piece right here. This was printed all in one go and then it moves. Because the resolution is so great on an SLS machine, you get these high strength parts out of nylon that can then move because all of the nylon powder is, is the support material and then it just blows away. You can tell right here that the process is not perfect and you do see some layer inconsistencies right here, but I can barely ding it for that because this is just, <laughs> this is a really cool piece. This is huge and it's great and it shows one of the cool things that SLS can do in that you have pieces and model parts that are already assembled and you don't have to assemble them after the fact, but the spring itself is modeled into the 3D model and it works. Oh, it's extraordinary. This is so cool. This is so dang cool. What is this? Oh man, it's a keychain. It says 3D Printing Nerd. But on the back are gears that actually spin. Here's a tire. You can see the tread. The tread looks cool. The inside is smooth and it's, it's rubbery. So you could print tires for your OpenRC F1 using an SLS printer and have yourself some really unique tires that look awesome. This, I believe, is a turbo unit or an impeller or something. <laughs> it's just amazing that stuff like this works. Even if you used PLA material and, and some sort of uh, P uh, PVA dissolvable support material at 100%, you're still not gonna get the precision that an SLS printer offers. Ooh, more candy. 
which I will eat later. All right, printed with Centret Lisa. Here we go. Let's see what's in this box. Oh, this is cool. So here we go. It's a light bulb. It looks like it has a built-in LED. That's kind of neat. It's like a little light bulb and then it shows the, the pattern. Oh, and an informational card. Oh, it's, the, it's a Christmas card. And this special time of the year, one of the real joys is the opportunity to say thank you and wish you the very best for the new year, your friends at Centerit. Cool. So I don't have a Centerit printer and I don't have an SLS machine. I know that they are extraordinary machines, but you are paying a premium for the ability to do stuff like this. Uh, the Centerit machine, I know, uh, starts at US $7,990. I know the Form Labs Fuse One, I believe, starts at just around 10K. But what you do need to consider is technology like this is coming down in price because it wasn't that long ago that a system like this would cost you six figures. And now, granted, we're at a high four or possibly five figures, but that's coming down. And you know, in the next couple of years, technology like this could be even cheaper, and it might be that rather than the CR10s, rather than the Ultimakers, rather than any of the other FDM 3D printers, maybe we have an assortment of different manufacturers making SLS machines, and we have different powders available to make even crazier creations. So the future looks incredible, and I can't wait because all of this stuff is just amazing, and I'm just wide-eyed grinning at the possibilities that we have in the future plus candy. Well, again, thanks for watching this little show and tell. A big thanks to Centered for sending over this little care package. I do appreciate it. I'd love to see the Lisa sometime. Please, if you're even considering it, please don't send me one. It looks like that thing makes a terrific mess when you're having to clean up. I don't need any of that, but maybe I can come visit someday. And like I always say, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And if you're not subscribing, please consider subscribing and ring that bell to be notified of when cool, crazy, future 3D printed things I can hold in my hand is uploaded to the channel. And a big thanks to everybody that supports me in various ways, such as Patreon, YouTube Red, PayPal, YouTube sponsorships, and for everybody that just lets those ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys. As always, high five.